Okay, let's record. All right, we're <laughs> now we're gonna talk about episode four and five. So we started at home. This episode it's called uh, "What Year Is She?" Uh-huh. And yeah, we started at home where the last episode left off, and now we see someone that came came to visit. She's looking for Kyo. We find out like you know a little bit about her in the first five minutes or so of um, the opening. So, do you have any first impressions? Who is this girl? What did you get from the just the beginning part? Yeah, I mean, you, you can tell me like about the whole thing, but mainly because like, at the, the beginning. beginning, I thought like she was like a sister or something like that. But then later on, you know who she is. That's why I was asking if it was at the beginning. It was like a, like a sister or a significant other because she seemed really intense. Mm -hmm. Like she was all like, oh my God, like I went, he's here, like I found him. So that was like the first impression. Like she's re like really, really intense because she sees him and then she goes like from one extreme of the emotion of happiness and almost like crying and a lot of emotion like, oh, I found you. And then she goes to the other extreme where she gets so pissed and so upset that she's just hitting him. <laughs> so that's pretty interesting. And yeah, she started punching him, didn't, didn't she? Yeah, she she just knocked him uh, around a little bit. Yeah, so she know, goes so like, she's, like she's not middle ground. She's like oh, super happy, super sad, happy, sad, I don't know what. And then boom, mm -hmm. mad, angry. Because she was hitting him pretty hard. Yeah. And it was so confusing. Because first she's almost like crying. Like excited that she found him. So I'm assuming like he just left and didn't say anything. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something they say later. There, Like she was like, you left the mountains and didn't even say anything. And you came. Or you, you left and then you came back and you didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Pretty much what she was saying. Like she was I'm trying to think of the word. Reclamandole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she was just telling him like that's just not okay for, with her yeah i i love her introduction like her introduction i feel like introduction of other characters are really good good too but her introduction is i feel like it just takes you off guard for sure like yeah she seems like a sweet little girl especially like, from what we see from the ending of the other one mm -hmm. like oh this sweet little shy girl like hiding behind the tree and then mm -hmm. yeah she can like punch the living life out of people She's really strong. Uh, yeah, she yeah. is. Because then we get the intro after that, like, after that little, like, intenseness mm -hmm. <laughs> in the beginning. And then we get the intro, and then after, we get, or the opening, um, and then we get um, to know a little bit more about her. She's two years older than them, so she's older, actually. She seems pretty young to me. Like the Yeah, because she, 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 yeah, she acts younger. But she's older. Oh, and wait, then... is, she, is she older? Is she older? Two years older than... Than Kyo and Yuki. They're the same age. Uh -huh. Yeah, so she's two but years she's older. she's younger than the other guy, right? The older she one? Would it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes, they uh, they were asked... Like, she's part of a Zodiac. So she's an animal from the Zodiac. Mm -hmm. She's the first girl from the Zodiac that we meet. Toru doesn't want to know right away, like, what she is. They also tell us in that little part that there's two other girls in the Zodiac. So between... Of the 12 or 13 I guess because of the cat there's two more girls that we haven't met so mm -hmm. give us a lot of information and like you know we might meet them later and also like the rest of them are gonna be guys they don't tell us what animals they are we don't know what animals they are or who they are we just know that no. they are around mm -hmm. so that that does answer like I think this is something you said in the first episode first episode we did here where you were talking about how like you didn't know if like there was multiple the same animal and stuff so there's only one mm -hmm. one of each and then there's only like the, or the 13 of them and that's it there's no more people in the family that are cursed mm -hmm. just them for the which, zodiac animals which then is something interesting because they all have the same last name yes they're the same. Mm -hmm. so they're like cousins yeah technically technically mm -hmm. but it's like she was really excited about finding him so did she live with him like because he seems like he has not he didn't didn't live with the other two mm -mm. he was in another place and then he left to go train or whatever and then he appears and now he's living with the other two so then where does she live they don't mean to say but most of they, they don't say so i can't really and answer. then like why is she oh well, i know that on the little story that they go back to when they were little mm -hmm. i don't know if that's the order we were going in mm -hmm. but 
Yeah. And where, okay. uh, where does that little story come about? Like when they were a little, little? later, but it's okay. Because mm-hmm. then it's like, what? Well, I know that even in cousins, you are closer to some of them than the others. Yeah, like that's the thing about this. Like, I actually don't know like the complete answer, but I know like the Soma, they have like the family and stuff. Like, they're a clan. So there are actually a lot of different families that are in the same clan. They have the same mm-hmm. clan. So I don't know how like blood related they are. Okay. But they are considered cousins. I don't know if they're actually like blood blood related. And if they are, I don't know if they're first cousins, second cousins or so on. Yeah. And also, because I've seen this in other places. Um, I've seen another anime where the girl is also like, she wants to marry her cousin. And like, mm-hmm. that's like an okay thing to have. Like, she's like, yeah, this is my fiance and it's her cousin. So mm-hmm. it's just like, I think it's a cultural thing too, where like they don't see it as... um weird or anything uh-huh. or other people might be a little bit taken aback from like you know listening to that but yeah. i just think it's yeah it's just a cultural difference in this case mm-hmm. but yeah so yeah she wants to she even says like she's like i'm in love with this man you know like, yeah she, because she says like he's he's um her fiance because when they were little that's when the little story comes about mm-hmm. another thing we learn when two spirit animals of them hug mm-hmm. And nothing happens so she can hug any of them like any of them and they'll be okay yeah mm-hmm. even though like she's the opposite sex she's able to hug yep like, mm-hmm. like the zodiac mm-hmm. so something that we learn and it's pretty cool um how do you think like we we know from the whole episode pretty much just yelling at us that kagura loves kyo like that's how she feels about him blah blah, blah. how do you think that Kyo feels about her. I don't think he feels the same way. Well, I don't even know. Well, he does make a comment that he thinks like it's annoying how she's always like yeah, yelling she... about the marriage stuff and all mm-hmm. that. But they were friends from what we see, like from the flashback later on. Mm-hmm. They were younger, like they hung out. Um, they obviously know each other. They probably talked before he went to the mountains and wherever he lived. Like she obviously looks for him. Uh, yeah, so... like I mean, he does see or say that she's annoying because you know how intense she is and always like wanting to i mean the way she shows her affection is too intense but at the same time he hasn't like le- not left her away if like based on what you know because how she's like oh you left i mean that before he left he was around so he would interact with her so i don't know he could be in denial you think that he might like her he might care might... for her but you know because she's so intense and then he's not that good at you know well i don't know because we haven't really seen him but i don't think he pays like it takes him by surprise when someone is like not kind but kind of like affectionate towards him mm-hmm. because you know even like the the little moments that the other girl Toto. Mm-hmm. Like he he's caught by surprise, and he can be like, n- like he's like, oh, so it can be the same thing. So then he's just like, no, I don't like her. She's annoying. But maybe he does like receiving that that someone cares for him in such a deep level. Yeah. I feel like with him, it almost seems like he doesn't believe it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know, like the way that he's very dismissive of it. That's what I feel. But you know, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I might know why, but we don't know why at this point um, he might feel like that or he might seem like that because, yeah, like he he was even like, like you could tell that he was kind of happy when like at the end, jumping to the end, where like he got his hamburger and it had cheek, like a egg on it. And like mm-hmm. that, that's something that, you know, really resonated with him. So I think like, yeah, like she might be a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. And that he, I think he's okay with her in some way. Yeah. From what we've seen here. Mm-hmm. So when she's like, you know, telling Toru like about how much like he likes Kyo, she was like, yeah, I love him so much. I would love everything about him, all the good and bad things. And I even love him for his true form. Mm-hmm. And then we see this like, it takes like a dark turn right there like we see like it gets like really intense really quiet and we see a few looks here and there kyo actually like goes and he's like like i will never forgive you if you say anything about this mm-hmm. and uh, he, she punches him <laughs> but <laughs> what do you any guesses anything that you you know predictions that you have about this what what is she talking about on the true form yeah you might be well it seems like it's something negative something that he's ashamed of because he doesn't want her to say but then it's like 
is she referring to like a personality trait or is she referring like oh i'm even okay when he's a cat like when he turns into a cat hmm. however he acts as a cat mm -hmm. you know because uh, like are they considering that's his true form like you know when he transform into a cat so then she's okay with him being like that or she loves him when he's like little cat but or is she talking about like a personality aspect of him that maybe he's more because you know like cats well it's kind of like a stereotype that like a cat is more it has like that um that they only love you when they want to love you like they don't like to just get attention compared uh, talking about like animal personality wise like a cat they're low maintenance like they don't want your attention that often they're not as needy they're more like cold or so is that like something like his other personality where he's more not aggressive but i don't know how to describe it distant not this because in this one he is kind of distant but still not not distant in a way that he hurts you hmm. because he's still like you know he's still distant like how he was treating Toto? Mm -hmm. yeah like you know how he was treating her at the beginning yeah like he was so upset that she was there and but it's still like even though he was mean or whatever like it was not like with the intention of hurting her so you know so maybe that's the other like dark side of hit of his cat self if they're talking about personality which i'm thinking because i mean they already know he turns into a cat so it wouldn't be like a big secret that's true it would not be a secret that he's turning into a cat mm -hmm. interesting okay we're at the beginning of this so um obviously we so those are the high points yeah at this point. or maybe like maybe because they're zodiac so yes he turns into a cat but maybe he he like he's cat form is another form of cat if it no, was like, another no, like, form of a cat like would it be like a tiger or something like that like a big cat yeah but then what would he be no because it? then this no but the, isn't there a tiger in the story there is a no. tiger that's a different one mm -hmm. so then no Can i, I don't know hmm. interesting okay well because, you know he turn into like all of them turn into cutesy like like the mouse or the rat he turns into a tiny cute little rat and not the ugly rats oh so you think it might be a cat, but an ugly cat? Not an ugly as in like physical. I don't know how to say it. Like scary, scary rat. Cat. Mm, okay. Maybe. Uh, Maybe. Maybe not. All right. So I wanted to also just notice, like take a little notice on the show. She was wearing a. For, for Oh, he had his little, her little backpack. Yeah. Her, her little backpack is. And like right there, you can really see this affection and like infatuation. That's a little um, obsessive. It is very much, but I think that's just the way that she. I know is. it's cute and all, but it is a little obsessive. It's, it is a little too much. Maybe you know, for him. Sad. It might be a little bit too much. Little backpack. But some people might I appreciate mean, that. You know? I remember where those were like on style. Mm -hmm. You had your little backpack, but it was like a animal or something like that. It was either like a backpack or your little like little thing to carry money. Because I had a poo, a cat. I had several of them. She has always had that little cat with the little bow. Yeah, that's that's something that she carries around with her. I know that it probably is nothing important, but okay. what is it? I'm, I was just like I found it funny how the older cousin. She would answer. Mm -hmm. All he worries about, like I found it funny how he sees like this girl, a good out. Name. No. Mm -hmm. obviously he know, like he being the older cousin has seen the other cousin so he knows the interaction so the family dynamic like for Toru all of that is new he's like she's meeting her for the first time but for Shigure like he like he's, he's seen them grow or something so like when the two boys they fight within each other like he knows that this is how he goes they fight mm -hmm. um but it's so fun so then he's so like okay they're fighting but then he just worry about his house <laughs> i mean yeah they, they they go and they just show her, his house like just people yeah. like she's going to visit and the other ones are there like staying and that's yeah. his house technically and yeah and yeah but so it then is. it's like his his house that's what he says so it's not like the house of the three of them it's like his personal house they didn't really say. I mean, they and then, told them that they live there. Okay, 
but he yeah he acts like okay that's my house and you're destroying it but on the other hand if you already know the type of cousins you have wouldn't you design your house i don't know without the little doors or more resistant that's the way it was done i know that that's probably the architectural style or whatever but come on you child prove your house a little bit but no it was just funny how he's it, so worried it's, about it's very funny house and i'm guessing they have money because imagine being fixing the house all the time yeah probably right probably. who pays rent do they pay rent from where they get the money like their main guy sends the money like an allowance do they all have an allowance because they have to pay for their school so who pays for their school they don't say so it's like are they from a wealthy family well like the only thing that we heard mainly about the family is that like uh, in the first episode of shigure and yuki when they were talking about like how like they saw toru like um around like mm -hmm. and they were, they were kind of confused because they're like we haven't rented any of our state to anyone mm -hmm. so this whole thing is ours and there's and mm -hmm. there isn't any houses around here so we they didn't know why they saw her so yeah. that kind of tells us a little bit about like they have a pretty big ownership of land Property. Mm -hmm. yeah probably maybe maybe a little wealthy maybe not okay, okay. so let's talk about dinner so here comes dinner Kagura is like, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna cook for you. Like, don't worry about it. So she whips out this whole dinner, <laughs> so many dishes, and like just pretty much empties out the the fridge. And she's just so excited, and she makes all these things, all her like kills favorite things or whatever. And then she goes to tell him, Hey, dude, food is ready. And she gets a little excited and kind of like punches him through or like I, I think she gets mad he said like he didn't want to or something and then like she like kind of throws him down breaks through the floor to the like the first floor and ruins the dinner right and something I wanted to say before we get on that is that something that I noticed was Kyo's room because we, we've seen like Toto's room and this is Kyo's room and it looks like pretty empty pretty like clean and organized, I would say, for the most part, but it looks really empty more than anything. And it's just like, we see him just sitting there with like his weights. And he does he have a bed? It does not seem like he has a bed right there. Um, I know like a mat? In, in, in some Japanese houses, they do like, some sort of like sleeping bags, almost. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So it's just something that I found really interesting because like if we notice his personality like you know i feel like our rooms tell us a lot about our personalities and what we like and how we go about life mm -hmm. and his personality is like this awkward little guy that you know he's, can have his intense moments as well and like he's all over the place and can be a little aggressive here and there and then he has this clean room mm -hmm. so you know did you notice something too hmm, i wonder why but interesting. And then he's like, the fact that he doesn't have a lot of stuff mm -hmm. can also be like how, you know, how he just picks up an Eve. Like he's not really attached to someone. So then like, be, you're, yeah. you know, because you just get up and leave, you wouldn't have as many things as if you like are more sedentary or more like stuck with your family, your home. It, it could also be like just, just the way that he was raised. Like I know some mm -hmm. families are just like, you need to have your room clean. Everything has to be, you know, in a nice shape. We don't know. We don't know. But yeah, so then we do see him going through the second floor. Mm, yeah. And she would just like so over it. Is it because they have that spirit, the spirit animal? That's why they are so strong and they can stand like those strong yeah, like things. I'm, I'm not sure if that's why. I think that it's just part of the anime thing because what they actually tell us is that their bodies are actually weaker than regular bodies and that's what they transform. Um, yeah, I, I really do think it's just more of a the anime for a comedic effect and yeah, like I don't think it's a serious thing. Alrighty, so next, Kagura is obviously really upset. She goes to look at the fridge, it's empty and then she's, she's like, okay, I'm gonna go and try to fix this. I'm gonna go and buy more food. Mm -hmm. And she has this little moment with Shigure, which such a nice moment, the nice little moments, of, you know. And we see like Kagura like express some of her worries, and mm -hmm. she's worried about how this girl is around Kyo. Kyo. So, what do you think this is based on? What do you think this this is actually something that she should be worried about, like that you know Toru might steal Kyo away or something, or do you think it's just well, that's, her obsessive? I feel that like, the getting worried is something normal. Mm -hmm one like normal that they are showing like when you have a person that is your not your person because that sounds so wrong 
But like when you have like someone that you love so much, especially with her intensity, she loves so much this man, and you don't know like we don't well we don't know yet, or we don't know how the interaction of the other females are with him or with the rest of them. So maybe for her it's like okay, so it's always just me. But then you have this new like a, a new girl that is different compared to you guys you know compared to them like they don't share that so she can offer like another type of it's just someone that she doesn't know that is living there with them so like while all this time i was away or he was away he's been here with her so that you know because of how intense she loves him i feel so like we we cannot tell but i just feel like that's a normal thing because he can go either way i can see how cat can, mm -hmm, can like develop feelings for toru just especially for because huh sorry for kyo to develop feelings for toru mm -hmm. so you think that that, that, that might be it can happen like it, it's something that is not it's something that for kagura is like something that is reasonable for her to have that fear because yeah. we see like we see Even if you think about it, she can see it as, and he's always dismissive towards me, or he gets annoyed by me, yet he's not like that with Toru. I mean, he is, but not really. I mean, she hasn't really seen them interact that much. But you know, but what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is like, what would you think with her intensity, if you show up to the house of the person that you love, really, really strong, and he just left, he hasn't even communicated where he's at and then you find you find that he's living with this person it's yeah. just conclusions that you can come come up with that's true so it's, more, so it's more of a normal thing and then from seeing it from an outside perspective like there is a possibility that you know maybe he because he can either develop like a romantic interest with her or just like a really close friendship with her so just all possibility so i know her jealousy is understandable It is, and it's, especially because when you think about like the law of attraction, if you spend more time with someone, you're more likely to like them. Not always, and it might be a different kind of like, but for the most part, that might happen. So yeah. I'm really excited to see where this goes. And I feel like everybody who watches it, like you can identify, you have felt that at one moment, so you can identify. Yeah. Can and it could also actually happen with Yuki, right? Because Yuki is right there too. Mm -hmm. So it is, I think, a valid fear. And then also in that little scene, we see like Shigura says something after she leaves. And she's like, he was like, even I get jealous of times too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That was a really interesting look there. It was just something that I just mm -hmm. kept in mind when I watched it. I'm like, oh yeah, Shigura in his intense moments. Because even, even, um, doesn't on that moment also, or around that time, we see also like the not jealousy but a little bit that um honda has the total oh yeah she says that she is jealous of the way that she's able to love like that because she's like i've never felt like that for anyone mm -hmm. and i'm jealous that she's able to do that and that she yeah like the close share it. but i don't think she's actually uh, she said that she was not jealous because of a person mm -hmm. it's kyo but she's like because of that that she's able to go through that which is, i think it's such a nice way to look at it it's like yeah like more about the feeling than the actual um, i mean the the person matters. yeah mm -hmm. the, the the feeling the journey is, is something that a lot of people take for granted okay so let's talk about how she she goes to the supermarket mm -hmm. and she forgets her wallet and thought is right there and she you know saves the day she plays mm -hmm. yeah and so they're walking home and like she's Uh, Kagura's distant she's sad she's overthinking over there probably and then you know that's when Toru just like tells her like yeah I'm jealous of that part of you and mm -hmm. you're able to do that and then she shares that she when they were little what Kyo would do the, the day that she met Kyo was he was drawing fried eggs on the on the ground mm -hmm. I found that really interesting because we both work with kids mm -hmm. right and uh, usually when I see kids drawing you know with chalk or something they're always drawing like unicorns cars guns I don't know like things like that and when it's food it's kind of like cupcakes or something like you know mm -hmm. and he's drawing fried eggs mm -hmm. alone on mm -hmm. the dirt mm -hmm. and then she's like hey you know do you want to be friends and then he's like yeah yeah whatever <laughs> like, i mean he, he was really excited about it and you mm -hmm. can tell it's something that what's new to him like that's the way i took it like i'm like that's some this is like something that's new yeah i wouldn't 
I mean, if I ever saw a kid doing something like that on the ground, something like that's so mundane, like a food, mm-hmm. like fried eggs, I'll just be like, why fried eggs? Is that your favorite food? Mm-hmm. Um, what else can you draw? Like, you know, but it will be something that's concerning to me. But I don't know if that's something that will be concerning to you. Mm, I don't know. You can't be like something like just maybe pay attention what other things they see that kid drawing but i don't know how it will be strange because i like you said you don't tend to see a lot of little kids drawing like drawing like that specific type of food Mm -hmm. you know they always draw like things they imagine or things from cartoons or their toys or things like that I don't know, maybe he does like Friday. He probably does. I'm thinking he does. I'm just thinking, I'm just asking, like, I'm like, why are you drawing that by yourself over there? Like, okay, I mean, something else, it will be like, oh, you're playing restaurant or chef or whatever. You're cooking the eggs and you're doing this whole thing. But in, in I don't have a picture of that, but you can see like he had drawn already one and he was going to the next one. I don't know how to draw another one. one. <laughs> to another, draw another one. I'm like, do you just want it to be pairs? Or are you just going to be drawing that for the rest of your time? outside mm-hmm. i don't know i just thought it was interesting because you know, yeah it, it is a little odd because I, I look at kids behaviors all the times so, and that's something that i'm like huh I, like i would be asking so many questions but you know like, i'm glad that he got to play with kagura mm-hmm. and they obviously had fun in that scene mm-hmm. and then we oh, we see that they are like how, how do you think in that talk in that walk how do you think that kagura ends up liking total like does she like her does she still feel this you know concern about her this rivalry i don't think because it seemed like they, that was like their little moment to become friends so become because like like you said like the way Toru tells her like i'm the one who's jealous of how like you know like she's like oh she had she kind of letting you know like she admires how much you love him that she won't be she won't try to steal that from you so i think that that was the the thing and then just like the fact that she came in and went looking for her paid like help her on the moment where she didn't have money so she took like that initiative so that was something nice and then with what she said of like you know Admiration. wanting to and then she's telling you like i have never felt that love to someone so it's like oh okay so then you don't feel that for him because you haven't even experienced it so nice. so i feel like that's why she's like okay you're you're cool you're nice be friends yeah so then we go to the roof kagura ends up cooking some hamburgers so she ends up cooking and then she goes mm-hmm. uh toru goes to get kyo was not in the room and then she goes up to the roof and there he is and then they have a little conversation where uh-huh. we see a different side of kyo i think we haven't really seen this and he is talking about martial arts and his shisho which is uh his uh like teacher mm-hmm. martial arts and how he went with them to the mountains to train and how he's really strong he's even stronger than he says that he's even stronger than yuki and mm-hmm. Oh, he's super super cool you see him like really really light up here yeah like really excited that he gives like so so excited about like talking about something that is a passion of his so maybe he not like yes it is like a competition with you can- the other one Mm-hmm. but also like he does really like like the martial arts and maybe it helps him like you know because it's something that helps you control your emotions not to be that explosive i know he he should be better at it but he's working on it working Alrighty. then what happens is that kagura is getting out it's the next morning actually and kagura is getting out because she's getting upset that kyo doesn't want to kiss her or something i don't know something like that <laughs> she runs full speed out of the door and there's a paper delivery guy or something they bumped into each other and yuki comes to save the day mm-hmm. or him out like you can really see the charm here in yuki you know like he can bring out the charm he knows that he can bring it out and like you know the even even like the the delivery guy or whatever he, he was charmed with by him for sure he didn't even mm-hmm. like help, like you know ask anything or anything then we see kagura mm-hmm. transform and then we get to know what her, her animal is what it and her year which is mm-hmm. the year of the boar yeah Oh, girl, you're cute. See, they're always like cute looking. She, Instead of like, she has a little intense moment here. <laughs> like, I think like this where like also like Toto wants to play, pay a compliment, but it doesn't turn out the way that she wants to because she's like, yeah, now I can see what you see in Kyo, and mm-hmm. you know, 
he's really cool or whatever and then she's like you've been cheating on me and then she just goes at him and i really like the little comment that she could have said like it's like didn't you say that you will forgive him even if he like is like to come in feel if he's like okay, dishonest yes. or mm-hmm. yeah and then she's like yeah but that doesn't mean that i'm not gonna like do something first yeah get him punish him first i think that's what she had said mm-hmm. i thought that was really funny so yeah like she is really she, she's like i would think this is almost like an obsession to me like the way that she likes kill to just be that okay with him i don't know it just seems a little bit too much tell you she seems tense yeah and but it's so, it, so obsessive. it is obsessive but i'm like is it just an obsession or is it actually love mm. but it, it's, it's also like you have to think about when does it become an unhealthy obsession when does it become like you could be born out of love but then when does it stop being healthy like or normal so call it normal but when when does it become you know like something that is not longer love or healthy love because to be that intense like all the time even for the other person mm-hmm. i can see how it is tiring because it's like one moment you have this person adoring you and loving you and and being like affectionate towards you or and then something can trigger them and then they go to like look he's bleeding like like intense fighting hate and well not hate but you know like anger towards you that is intense as well it's a lot so mm-hmm. we end the scene she goes to the library uh, goes to the library to get some books about the guy's interest so she has a books in martial arts and like someone like gardening mm-hmm. and then she gets a call and she drops the books because it's she from her grandpa dun, 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 dun. and then we're going to the next episode episode well that we're in there the hat again yeah this this was like um the ending of episode four yeah and then like we see like a picture of the hat again when we go to her room they keep showing that damn hat that hat and then uh, is that the intro with the other blonde girl comes out the one that um for episode five uh-huh on the uh, intro I don't, i don't remember that she did Is said? that not, not that one no 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 the blonde girl that thought uh, you're saying like the opening the, the opening right mm-hmm, the opening yeah yeah you kept you, you kept bringing that up yeah talk about that so on the opening you saw someone that we saw give Toto kiss in the episode beforehand and you were saying that it's the same person i'm thinking the one that she saw at her work maybe <laughs> who knows i mean you know maybe so It'll be determined. we go to the beginning of episode five which is called i've been fooling myself and it's something that Toto said right mm-hmm. and we you know we know that from the call we, we learned that there were no, renovations already so total you know can go back to living with her mm-hmm. and when she's giving out those news like how do you think she was giving them out like was there any sort of sadness in her there was a sort of th- sadness Like she was like she was happy because she even mentions like she knows she needs to go back to her home with her grandpa because that was just temporary. But at the same time, she's like, I I've been fooling myself thinking that I'm related to the Soma. Like you know, right now that she's been living with them, she's been playing like oh i'm part of one of them so it is like that sadness that oh like i know it's like i need to go back oh it was never meant for me to stay here permanent but then she's like she wants to stay there permanent yeah and then we also see her goal and she has like this flashback of when her mom was around it was a really sweet flashback she is cooking even though she has a fever mm-hmm. and her mom just tells her pretty much it's okay to be selfish sometimes and like you have to like take care of you mm-hmm. you know and Which she really... took this day you can see it like how she worries about others are taking care of others mm-hmm. then we have the intro or the opening we see her like giving the rundown to them like hey there's like this much of this ingredient you need to get more of this you need to do this you know like mm-hmm. just house things that she's usually taking care of she's letting them know about them and then she gives them the address and i'm just like the way that she's like running down through like everything that needs to be taken care of is almost like i see her so much like a mom in so many ways mm-hmm. so yeah and she gives the address and we just see like the guys checking in like okay i guess she's leaving or whatever yeah also we found that to- fruit basket is an actual children's game yeah it's a game 
and it's a it's, it's kind of it reminds me of this game that I used to play with my parents or like my dad used to play with us called like a liston I think it was called listones which is pretty much like ribbons so we will um there will be like the seller and then there will be like the person that's like trying to buy it the least or whatever and then each of the people that are the actual ribbons will go and tell the seller like hey i'm blue and like in secret you know i'm orange or i'm whatever and then the person that's coming to buy they'll be like knock knock like and it will be like this whole like like a script almost they will go through and then like he will try to guess like what color we are we're like can i have a red ribbon and if somebody was red then they will like that person had to go run and then they had to catch him or something it was this whole thing almost like a tag game so it kind of reminded me of that so yeah so we learned about the fruits baskets everybody gets a fruit uh, mm-hmm. assigned to them and then once they call your name you go and play yeah. and they call they actually got um they named her as a rice ball which is not a fruit and she says it's something that kids used to just be mean to her mm-hmm. when she was younger so it's just bad Yeah, so she but she, she like in in the thing in in the in the flashback we see her like being cool with it cuz she didn't know, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she didn't know that they were actually being mean. We see this little scene of her like that I pause on because I just really like this particular like frame. Mm-hmm. Um she says like I've always been a little dim which just just calling herself stupid in other words. Yeah. Is she? Uh, yeah. yeah. Like she's like I just didn't like or you know maybe naive or gullible too. And like she notices that about herself that she just wants to like believe people, you know, believe the best in, yeah. person, in people Seems and be a good person all that but it comes with this disadvantages where other people can exploit you and you can get left out. I thought it was interesting. So do you think that it's true that when she's calling herself dim do you think that she's actually that no it's just her personality she tries to see the good in everybody yeah it is her personality but i mean she does need to be more but maybe it's also because she's young so she doesn't she hasn't been around different people or she just doesn't have that experience that yes it is good to see the good in others or try to always be positive about things but then there's a point in life or a time that sometimes you have to be more not believing that everybody is just going to be good or nice to you. Yeah. Just be a little more cautious. Mhm. Hmm. Okay. So, uh next we see her going to the, her grandpa's house. Right there we meet a few of her relatives, like her cousin, like two mm-hmm. cousins, there's a female cousin, a male cousin, and an, an aunt. Dad. Yeah. And so the grandpa, the gr- this grandpa Mm-hmm. where she was living with is a maternal grandpa or a paternal grandpa paternal paternal so and so the the aunt is through the dad side yeah that's what we learned and then we see him like interacting with them and talking to them and he mm-hmm. actually calls her Kyoko he calls Toru Kyoko mm-hmm. which like multiple times throughout the episode And we, yeah. he actually calls her that in other episodes too, previous to this. That's the mom's name. How do you take that? Well, maybe she's really alike, like her mom. Mm, from the flash of flashbacks we've seen, is that something we see? She's Not really, but I'm just saying because why would they call her the, the mom's name? We just to distinguish that she's her daughter. Well, it's only grandpa that calls her that, right? So the rest of them mm-hmm. don't. Just when it's like you know, maybe she re- he re- she reminds him of her. Um. We do learn later um, in this conversation, like we learn about what the family's been doing. They hired a detective, private investigator. Mm-hmm. Yep, to just you know look at what she was doing and found out that she was sleeping with some man and out of work. Which is like, which at one point is like, okay, you were so worried about what is she doing, but if they hired that private investigator, wouldn't he have known that oh, well, she was living outside on a tent and then. He, he she moved to this house with this voice but if you're so worried about what is she gonna do is she like acting appropriately or whatever why you didn't offer to take her with you whatever you want true that's true and obviously if they had enough money to do that they probably had enough money maybe to like get her like if they didn't want her to stay with her because maybe it was gonna be too crowded maybe like a hotel mm-hmm I'm just thinking about that. I'm like, wait, what are you doing? They obviously didn't want her there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like they, I don't know. It was just, I just found it so rude 
of them to just get involved in her life and like not only to get involved but to assume the, w- the way the way they were getting involved yeah. because one thing is like when family gets involved in the life of you or someone but when it's out of love or out of like a genuine care then you understand but when they're getting involved and they're coming in a it's not of care or concern for her safety because he could be understandable like hey we found out you were living with this guy like, with these strangers you don't know who they are you don't know who like and suddenly you're living there with them by yourself in a house that is you know like on the outside because they don't have a lot of neighbors i think they don't have neighbors <laughs> like i mean we d- we don't really see but how how close is their next or their closer neighbor or how close are they from town yeah but they're not saying it out of because of that it was more of like oh you were leaving with this man no yeah that's totally how i got it too i'm just like it doesn't seem like you're concerned at all whatsoever and you even say like yeah we need to know like somebody has a criminal record in a family because mm-hmm. this guy the male cousin wants to be it Uh, police officer and we can't mm-hmm. be like, having that round i'm just like why didn't he say something sooner like and like this private investigator obviously does not know enough but did, did not get do that good of a job if they didn't see like the dynamic that they had in that household mm-hmm. like in like just looking at the outside of how they treat each other and everything it didn't seem like there was anything you know beyond a regular family you know yeah anything weird quote unquote, other than they turn into on. animals like i just thought it was just really dumb and they just wanted to excuse her and then they also were kissing her because of we hear, hear a little bit more about kyoko here and how they saw kyoko and how she used to be quite violent in her past yeah say about her like she used to get in trouble and stuff from what we heard so <laughs> that's that, that's what we're doing basing their theories on on like why she must be doing something wrong in that household and i do understand like if it was just a regular concern of somebody that was actually like truly invested in her like yeah even i would be concerned if i knew like one of my cousins was moving in with some strange family where there's three men in the middle of nowhere almost like of course i would be concerned i'll be like girl what are you doing in there yeah like i'm just like are you okay like i mean not that i'm, I'm gonna go and like do something unless like there's something being done to her i mean i will ask in like not in a non-accusing way that would be the hope mm-hmm. right because we're not trying to and then it's like anything. and then you're waiting until she come like until you send her. well not you but because the grandpa is the one who called but until like you didn't went and ask her right away as soon as like you know how soon did they find out that she was living with these three guys and you wouldn't have said on? like you wouldn't have said anything if she wouldn't have like shown up to your home or that said that okay it's time for you to come back also like if they were concerned about her behavior and because of her mom which i'm just like just because a mom did something or might have done something in her past does not mean that the daughter is also going to do it like mm-hmm. it just depends of course genes matter or whatever but it's not like a for sure thing and especially yeah. if they actually knew total at all like the way that she is like I'm like, where are you pulling this from? You're just pulling from nowhere. Like, I feel like this is not against Toru per se. It's something more, you know? Because it's obvious mm-hmm. she's not doing anything. If you know no. her, like, just from meeting her, you'll be like, mm-hmm. this girl, she ain't no threat. She, she's a good girl. Yeah. Quote, yeah, quote. Mm-hmm. Well, people who consider her a good girl. So I just, I don't know. I, I find it so upsetting. Like, I hate this scene. I mean, I like it. I like it. It's just I hate the, the the way that they're treating her, and yeah, like yeah. they say, you know, the and phrase. And even like, that comment, like the comment that you put right now that on the picture, where she said like like mother, like daughter. That's really mean because it's like she's saying it in a way that if she's like her mom is something bad or something negative, and they know like her mom died, like the mom is not there. So to say to say it like that, like she was worried because she's like her mom and does something bad. Especially to Toto that's obviously so proud of her mom. She's always mm-hmm. bringing her up. She's always like quoting her and like she learns so much from her mom and she's like bringing it out and like mm-hmm. what about it. She 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 wears her so proudly. Yeah. And they're telling her that it's wrong to be like her or to mm-hmm. In, in that way, you, you could say, like, it's wrong to idolize her. And she's truly shocked. Like, I'm like, poor Toto. She's really sad. Yeah, because that's heartbreaking. Like, who would like to say, like, that like that hurts any child or any person 
that they tell you like oh i'm worried because you look yeah, you act like your father and making it seem like that's something wrong because most of it like you're feel proud of your parents and i'm um, pretty sure like i mean she was a good mom like she's a good person Toru, so some parts of her personality had to do with how her mom raised her yeah that's true Sure, and, and also like we see this in the I think it was the last no I think it was this episode like earlier on like what was the last episode I don't remember it was a flashback too with um her mom and they're mm-hmm. like at the at a cemetery mm-hmm. and she's saying like she's telling her that she's telling her that I want you like her mom was telling Toto I want you to be a, the kind of person that looks at people for like for the best of them like you, you try to look mm-hmm. for the best of a person Instead of just assuming, yeah. And this, you know, the way that her mom told her to be, and you can see like her mom is really like trying to take notes or whatever about taking care of herself. Like, mm-hmm. it's okay to be selfish. It's okay to yeah. just be you, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And you, you really see that, and then you kind of like you, you can see it again when other people say it to her, and that mm-hmm. really clicks. But if her mom told her that already, it obviously didn't click for her then. Yeah, She's still not doing what her mom said. It mm-hmm. kind of clicks a little bit more for her once somebody else kind of repeats it, and she's like, "Oh, maybe, maybe yeah. she was right." I don't know. I, I thought it was interesting too. I was just kidding. About yeah. That. If you're idolizing your mom like this, and you're, you know, trying to follow her example, why do you have to wait for another person to tell you? Did you forget? Maybe she forgot. I mean, she's still maybe. going through it, you know. Uh, and then Grandpa does what everybody wants to do, wanted to do at that moment, slaps the heck out of that cousin <laughs> like nothing. He's like, "Pa." <laughs> That was so rude and disrespectful. I'm so glad. Like, her grandpa really stood up to her because I don't think she was she was going to stand up for herself. She was just taking it. Yeah. She was not saying anything. Mm-hmm. And her grandpa actually went and he's like, you didn't, these are unpleasant people. And, you know, one thing is if they tell me something, then I'll take it. But you do not mm-hmm. have to take it. Yeah. And he he does mention, like, Katsuya, which is, which actually um, it, her dad named Katsuya. Mm-hmm. And you know, they said she he kind of breaks it back and like this hurt him comparing Toto to, to her mom again of saying, like, Kyoko will always be happy when she's like, you know, free, she's living mm-hmm. on her own, yeah. And so, I think he's just like saying, like, that's the same thing that she needs, also, she mm-hmm. needs to have that freedom, especially yeah. away from these people that are obviously just hating on her and her mom for whatever mm-hmm. reason it may be. And that's when Toto is like, hey, yeah, like. I want to go and stay with the yeah. Somas. That's where I mm-hmm. want to be or whatever. And she's like crying. Because she feels guilty of actually wanting to leave. And then out of freaking nowhere, Yuki appears. Look at those manners. They don't knock. They just so oh, perfectly. <laughs> I mean, they're there for a rescue. And then after that, we see their point of view of what happens under, you know, after she leaves the house. Mm-hmm. So yeah. how do we see them take it? They all miss her, but even they don't want her. Like, even she wouldn't? Yeah. In one way or the other, he also misses her, I think. But they're kind of being like standoffish. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, like, no, we don't care. Fine, she's gone. Like, she had to leave eventually. We yeah, said it, was- it was not permanent. And they're kind of being just sneaky around Shigure or like each other or whatever, tend to get that address and go find mm-hmm. her. And I thought it was just funny. I feel like she wouldn't knew they were gonna get the address. Oh yeah. They keep planning. Hmm? I'm not gonna say anything. I'm gonna pretend like I don't see you, but I seen that you grabbed the address. Yeah, and I think he's also like he does. Uh, this is where I think, okay? Because I love I, I like Shigure actually a lot. I think that he's really smart, and yeah, he plays them a lot. But I think mm-hmm. he's really smart, and you can really see it in these like moments because he obviously knows he knows how they are. He knows like if he tells them straight up like, "Hey, obviously you guys miss her, go and get her," mm-hmm. or like even before she left, if he would have said like, "Dude, like stay," like yeah. they would have been like, "No, no, no, it's okay. Like she can leave. Like I don't really care. You can see like mm-hmm. kill doing all that." He really does know they have to do it by themselves. Yeah. Like at their own pace and however they want to do it without other people noticing because they mm-hmm. don't want vulnerable to each other. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think, like, he just plays it really smartly here. It's like, ah, they're going to do it. I'm just going to wait. And there you go. Then they finally find a house. And then they're seeing, like, all this aspire. You know, like, all the yeah. events, all that 
accusations. Yeah, they're eavesdropping. They are really angry about what's being said. Sure. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, they were not be- they were not being nice. They were also shocked that Grandpa gave that little slap. You know what I'm saying? The- then they go in and like, I love the way. <laughs> okay, this is horrible. Okay, it's horrible because I don't like people manhandling people. But also, it was really funny the way that Kyoli just grabbed her by the head and like kind of like led her through mm-hmm. to get out. I don't know. I thought it was so funny. I'm like, you could just grab her hand, but I guess just manhandle her in front of. Because the it's, it's like it's like it reminded me of my uncle. Yeah, he's my uncle. He's my <laughs> mom's. Yeah, he's my uncle. Um, my mom's younger brother. So he's just four years four years older than me so we grew up being like siblings kind of so one time we were walking in a busy busy street i think it was like a parade or something and i was little so we were walking and he was i'm in front of him but um i'm a little clumsy sometimes so i don't pay attention um to my surroundings that well so the way i was walking like i was gonna get lost in the crowd so what he did instead of like you said he wasn't gonna grab my hand because that's like that show of like endearment like um, like kind of like affection like oh i'm gonna grab your hand with my uncle he always treated me like yeah you're like the younger like this young like this little annoying thing that i have to take care of um so instead of grabbing my hand he grabbed me like by the back of my neck and he was directing me where to go (laughs) <laughs> so we could like get out of that crowd because there was a lot of people coming in like different directions so it was a busy place and if like if he would have waited for me to get out because obviously he couldn't leave like walk faster because he's in charge of me so he kind of did that like you know grabbed me from the back and he was like to the right to the left so i wouldn't get hit or something mm. so it kind of reminded me of that like he was doing it because he cared like he cares about me even in those days where he always seemed like annoyed about me he didn't care because he could have left i think that's such a nice like way to connect this Mm -hmm. because we do see something like that like he probably i I can see it now like she is clumsy like we saw we've seen that since episode one like this girl is clumsy and uh, you know sometimes she's like daydreaming somewhere else or Mm -hmm. she's in complete shock right now that they're there yeah. And instead of grabbing her hand, because like she could obviously trip and like you know hug him or like something, and he could just form. Then yeah. make up the way that he did it that way, and we obviously know that he cares. Yeah. But yeah, it was. Is he barefoot? Oh yeah, because they don't wear shoes inside the homes, right? So we see that Yuki, like the other guy, was like making some comments or whatever, like the cousin, the male cousin, and he just flicks his finger at his forehead. <laughs> And he's like, like the guy, the cousin is in total shock that Yuki's a girl. I mean, a boy, sorry, girl, a boy. <laughs> like he's not a girl. And, and then on that flicking of the forehead, he tells her him that we could you had mentioned that before that sometimes they call each other by their last name. Um, or that no, that they call each other by the last name, but not by the first name or something like that. When they're not too familiar. Yeah. So then I mean, he's like her cousin, but he tells him like you haven't earned the right to call her total her, her first name mm-hmm. yeah because so, he hasn't her, her just closeness as an oh well you're like blood related you know because they're cousins so he should be able to call her by her first name but since the way he is with her you know he's not um like a respect like he doesn't treat her with care with respect so then that's why he doesn't have that possibility has yuki called her by her first name i don't know if I you don't noticed remember. He has not. Uh, okay, I haven't. I, I don't think so. Do you think he's earned that right? Maybe. I don't know how close they think they are. I mean, they live together. Yeah, but that's subjective. Like, I can't live with someone, and that doesn't mean that I'm close to that person. I mean, they go to the garden. Yeah, we have their little moments, but telling that someone is close to some other person, it's a little subjective. Okay. Maybe not like, yet. Who determines how close am I to you? Do I determine how close I am to you? Or do you believe, okay, we are now close, so... Some people, like, I've seen in other animes, like, they ask. Like, they're like, can I call you by your first name? And uh, he, she also does not call him, because he calls Kyo by his first name. And she it by his first name. But he does, she does not call Yuki by his first name. He calls mm-hmm. him Soma, Soma-san. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, and also like, have we ever heard Kyo say Toru or Honda? I don't think so. Have they? I don't know. I have. I have not. I have yet to hear him address her. Uh, honestly, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. And honestly, I haven't paid attention. Like, oh wait, I should look into like how they are referring to each other because that can mark like a different, like a difference on the relationship that they all have. Maybe we'll see a little something. Then they get out and like to tell her, like Kyo tells her. Well, you can take care of the family and like getting the stuff. Like, well, he tells her that why didn't you just tell us that you want mm-hmm. to stay, pretty much. And then after, he's like, it's okay for you to be selfish or to get discouraged. Mm-hmm. Because it's not something that happens really often with you. It's like if somebody was selfish all the time, they're all annoying me. But with mm-hmm. you, it's okay. Mm-hmm. See that little moment? Yeah. And it's again, he's telling her something that her mom had already told her mm-hmm. like exactly the same and so why i don't know i have no idea that, that i really don't know i'm just like maybe in a way to say like this is where you're actually like it's okay to be with them she, like right now she's at a point where she, she she doesn't know where to be for example like she's not like well i should be with my family uh-huh. my family died maybe i should be with my grandpa but it doesn't feel right because the other people around me are just toxic uh-huh. so maybe this is a sign that's telling her, hey, these people actually do care for you. Yeah, Maybe because it's like care for you. really interesting how they make it in a way that because they tell her like exactly the same because you can say the same thing, but in different way, like in a different same message, different words, but they say like exactly. Yeah, I think how it's the just mom like a sign, is. some sort of sign that they're sending her. Like you're in the right spot right now. I guess I was thinking like. You're hearing that, like, that is exactly what your mom tells you. Like, it should feel something for her. You know, it should make her feel something. And then she just tells, like, yeah, I want to go home. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we see the scene, and I love the scene. I almost cried, but it didn't, you know, because I'm a strong woman. And, like, we see her in this, I think this is a hypothetical scene, because I don't know if it actually happened. But they call her, like, her fruit. Uh, which you know the rice ball mm-hmm. and she finally gets picked you know mm-hmm. and then she runs to them and then she does the, do this transition that she you know turns to her older self or like to her present self and they walk home holding hands together so they can hold hands that's fine not yeah, hugging holding hands is fine. it's just like touching like this like the torso part okay and then we look into the Next episode, we see the little thing. Um, so uh, I think it was Hannah Chan that said it, right? Mm-hmm. And it says, perhaps we should invite ourselves over. I was thinking since they're all memorized about the boys, and now that maybe they find out that she's living there and they are her friends, like, oh, well, let's go. See you. you know? Maybe. Maybe maybe they'll find out. Maybe they won't. We're going to see what happens next two episodes next. which are going to be episodes six and seven how many episodes are in total in total in this season 25 oh, okay. next season 25 too so total 50 mm-hmm. i'm really excited about the next two episodes i'm really excited about the episodes after that i'm honestly just excited about the rest of the season and we'll see you next, next time